<laughs> that was a good one too. The good forgetting juice that is Bud Light Seltzer Black Cherry. Mm. Well, time to knock the dust off this motherfucker. <laughs> Got some uh some water over here. Yeah. <laughs> We're staying hydrated. Tommy is. I'm hydrating with uh, what do I got? Strawberry, black cherry, Bud Light. You know, not bad, man. Have you had one of these yet? No, I don't think I like any seltzers or anything. Yeah, you're right. They taste like shit. <laughs> you're right. You're 100 percent right. I tried a few. You tried a few, man. It has been so long since I've stared at an interface. Good lord, Tommy, Corey. Hey, we're neighbors now. Yeah, man. Literally a mile away. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> if there weren't a mountain of trees between us, I could probably see your house. It's pretty true. It'd probably be pretty close. At least your mailbox. Dude, my mailbox is fucked. <laughs> it's seen better days, man. Like it has like a nail hanging out. And <laughs> our neighbor, our, not our neighbor, our mail person just leaves it open because she's like, fuck this. I'm going to keep it <laughs> open. Yeah, it rains inside my mailbox. <laughs> yeah. So every time it fucking rains on the mail runs, I come home and it's just like these wet fucking papers. It's like, cool, the mail came. Well, I guess we'll read it in a week when it dries out. <laughs> Hopefully the ink didn't fucking run. It's hot in here, Tommy. We're in Tommy's beautiful office. Slash studio. Slash studio. <laughs> slash podcast area for now. Thanks for hosting. Well, I thought I thought about bringing the table in here, but I think that would take up way too much room. I think you're right. But um, we can kind of see each other here. I'll situate. I'm sitting on basically a drum throne. It's comfortable, though. I'm sitting on a 10-year-old office chair. It's a little, it's a little squeaky. It's jank. So, what you been up to? <laughs> Work, eat, sleep, repeat, man. Yep. What about you, dude? <laughs> oh, you know... <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> oh, I definitely know. <laughs> Only the worst month of my entire life. Uh, I I just don't see how you can how you keep going after all the shit you've told me. Mm. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'm staying in bed today. I'm not gonna lie, man. For the first time in my life, I've had a couple of those days. I uh, I actually played video games two days in a row last week. What you been playing? The same game I always play. What do you play? Mario. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm a loser. I no Among Us, no Warzone, no no nothing. What do you play it on? Switch. Switch. I got a COVID switch, which was insane. I can't believe I got it. A uh, COVID shout switch? out to Spencer Vincent. Yeah, because the switch has disappeared because they quit all the importing. So uh -huh. they ran out of them and then everybody was selling them for like seven hundred fucking dollars. And one of his friends hit him up and was like, Hey man, I'm selling my switch for two hundred. I was like, I'm on my way right I drove all the way to BB, money in hand. <laughs> Yeah, I want to get one of those. I mean, they seem pretty cool. Like, it's better than fucking connecting like an Xbox or PS2 or some shit. I, I just play right it there. More than I play my PlayStation now, which I only played Crash Bandicoot. I bought that whole ass PlayStation because Crash Bandicoot got remastered. <laughs> I bought a whole PlayStation for one game, and it's the only game I've played. Except for my buddy Terry came over one day and played Mortal Kombat. Dude, I'll go on like like just shopping sprees. Like I'll be like really into a couple games. I get them, never fucking play them. <laughs> so I watch the playthroughs, and I'm just like, okay, I've pretty much seen how this ends, but I've got it just in case right. I want to play it. I'm so fucking lazy. Dude, the only one I even was intrigued was maybe that new Doom, because the playthroughs yeah. were insane. I was like, I'll never make it past the first level, but. Yeah, Zach got that, and uh, he was posting pictures and videos on Instagram, and I was like, well. But, like, I heard the, the fucking Zelda on a on Switch is really good. I heard it's really, really good. That's, like, mainly the only reason why I want one. Mario like, Odyssey's also fun on there. Oh, and uh, what's the one where you race around? Mario Kart. Mario Kart, That's yeah, fun yeah. as shit on there, too. We got that on the 64. Well, you too. got the original. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, podcast's over. We're going to go play. <laughs> later. I wonder how long this is going to last. I'm actually really intrigued because, oh, shit, I didn't even set up a fucking timer or nothing. Got the metronome running. Shit. What am I doing, dude? You can tell it's been, I think, July. July? My last podcast was in July. I'm so sorry, y'all. But, you know, when you have a music podcast and there ain't no music, 
kind of hard to fucking talk about shit. Yeah, man. Fucking, I'm looking at the wavelengths right now, and I'm just like, are we really recording? But yeah, we're then, recording. Yeah. You're right there. Yeah, it's very small. I don't want it to be too big. <laughs> Man, it's been a while, dude. Well, me and you got lucky, and we got to do some live streams at least. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty sick. At Vino's, at Vino's, both of our yeah. bands. So that's cool. That's a headache, isn't it? Very, very much a headache, dude. Yeah. Shout out to Brian, though. That dude's a fucking powerhouse. He has so much patience, bro. Dude, he he's a he's a he's a saint, and we don't deserve him. We really don't, because yep. we we did a we did like a test run, and then um. Then we were listening to the mix, and it, it was like one of those, you, you had to have somebody just listen back to it and be like, okay, how does it sound? Because when you're doing it live, you know, you have a lot of bleed. Right. And like, you know, Stan would have to cup the mic to get the to get it from bleeding. But right. then we were like, okay, probably don't uh, cup the mic. And then uh, I was talking to Brian about it. And I've never really been into that whole area where they did the mixes and shit. And I was like, holy shit. It's a lot. Fuck this. Yeah, I was like, "What all can you do over here?" Like, I know, I know what he can do, but I was just looking at the screens and looking with like how much control he actually has of the show. I was like, oh, "Holy yeah. shit!" Yeah. And he can take that and go get and take his iPad and walk out in the crowd and mix from yeah. there too. Yeah, it's so, so he can control monitors from that thing. That's the best investment Vino's ever made was getting that fucking digital board. Yeah, <clears throat> there's a place and up- a new stage. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> right. <laughs> <laughs> And speakers and lights and that shit paid for a lot of shit. It only took how many years for someone like you was like, "Hey, let's try this." Well, someone like me and Stan making jokes, and then somebody being like, "Are you serious?" And be like, "Can be." <laughs> <laughs> let's fucking do it then, bro. There's a place up in uh, Fayetteville called George's. We played at uh, George's Majestic Lounge. Yeah, that place that stage is so fucking huge. It is, and uh, like that was my that was our first time being there, and I was like. So where's like the sound sound area? And the sound guy came up on stage with the the iPad and shit. I was looking at it. I was like, "Fuck, man!" Because we we played this one place. I'm not gonna say where it was, but the the sound dude was kind of a dick and like say it, where it was. Come no, on. no, it wasn't. It wasn't in Arkansas. Okay. But the dude came up with an iPad and um, it was just me and Chase. Uh, Dalton wasn't there at that show, but uh. You could barely hear me, and I was like, "Bro, we need as much guitar out there as possible." Yeah. But um, when when the dude came on stage, I was like, "Okay, it's gonna go either really good or really bad." And when uh we started playing, and I was like, "Okay, I need more Dalton." You know, I could barely hear him. He just did it. And I was like, "Holy shit!" You yeah. Know what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, it's so sick. I love that shit. When that shit started coming around, and you could finally not have because used to you had to have front of house and monitor world. Yeah, and then it got to where you just have front of house, and it and it like lessened all the cables you need, all the staff you need, and it's just one guy, and he can be literally anywhere in the arena, so long as he even. I mean, dude, you can use your cell phone now. Yeah, yeah, and I've seen and, that. It's, and if a guy goes, "Hey, man, can I get more?" It doesn't. He doesn't even have to be at the board. He can just be like, "Oh shit, yeah, sure." Doot, doot, doot. Yeah, there you go, guy. It's just so fucking crazy too. Along with that spectrum of like like live performance, of you don't necessarily have to have like a cabinet and head but honestly for for all like human nature and shit i feel like that's the way to go still is the cabin head you can oh, say so fuck it do do the double cabin head. i respect know? the whole laptop thing that's going on now but i'm still like ride or die head cab i want to hurt my back i want to lift the whole drum set in the car they've they've come a long way Dude, though it's crazy the, that uh, that new neural, neural DSP stuff they came out with is like this pretty much like an axe effects but like better mm-hmm. and it's like a foot switch and it, it's just so intuitive for for people who want to get into that world. Dude, even Orange has a fucking head now that's a foot pedal. Yeah, yeah. It's a fucking amp head that goes on your fucking pedal board, man. I mean, we're getting to the point, even with real shit, where you almost don't even need. Anything you just oh oh yeah there's a di in that head on his pedal board yeah like soon stages are gonna be so blank yeah we got to come up with ways to fill all that space <laughs> well, like scrims are coming back it's also to the point too it's like I know a lot of bands they do 
they do like you know the axe effects and stuff like that mm-hmm. and a lot of them they do use actual cabs to have you know stage volume and if you're going that route i really think you should you should go that way because if you're up front in the crowd and you can only hear like the drums it's not you know it's not oh, as yeah, powerful if you're not, if you're mm-hmm. not out on in the crowd it's kind of weird yeah yeah you're, solely relying on the monitors i might sound ignorant i don't care all thoughts that i'm saying are my own and nobody else crash cast is not responsible for the <laughs> thoughts of tommy Ryan. <laughs> but yeah i really would love to get one of those campers too i mean i think it'd be fun to have it in my house yeah. so i don't have to like fucking oh i want to try this time i gotta put up a whole nother head and a whole nother cab and yeah have a different mic or have it all mic'd all the time you know you have like all these options and then you're just like in this room you're kind of like yeah. You have like the amps and shit, and it's just like, well, if you mic'd all that, yeah, and then you're having to switch shit out, mm-hmm. you're like, fuck, man, that's a lot of time. When on a camper, you can just go, boop, yep, got it. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could literally go in the closet and mic it up that way, but I don't know enough, enough of that shit to do that kind of stuff. So I'm just happy with the the plain computer shit I got. It's getting me to where I need to go. You're st- you're starting to try to do that, right? YouTube, uh, yeah, you're trying to build a YouTube. Yeah, I'm trying to to feel to to pretty much build something that's not you know, something original i guess mm-hmm. you know you you know you have the people with the skits you have the people tutorials and shit like that and you know i'm not one of those people to tell you how to do something because you know i'm always learning and i'm right just not that person i just want to play just let me play yeah you're just playing what would be cool though is to be able to have a good platform of just original music no covers just original playing that's it because a lot of a lot of people just build off of covers and they get demonetized and all this shit i know it's not your music and it should go to the rightful owners but usually it doesn't even go to the bands it'll just go to the label a lot of times it doesn't (laughs) yep labels get all the fucking money band camp for life for real dude everything else they've been doing really really good dude dude their back Friday it. shit where they don't take their cut? Come yeah. on, dude. I back that. That's dude. so insane. The fact that more people aren't fucking just using them. It's all I use. I'm fucking done with all the other shit. I'm done with it. I'll do a whole podcast on that shit at some point. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Me. Again, my views are my views. <laughs> I thought it was really, really cool. Y'all did that compilation thing and y'all put on man camp instead of, you know, um, everywhere else. And right. Shout out to Kurt. What was that for? It was it for was Punks for Paws. Punks for Paws. And that's volume yeah, yeah, one, yeah. so there is a volume two. Oh, shit. Going to be happening probably next year. Uh, it, it, then, you know, I don't know if there's going to be a concert, so I can't really, you know, I can't predict the future. But if I had to guess, we're going to have concerts by then, but it's going to be like, you know, really minimal, like 40 people. Got to be spaced <laughs> out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So nothing new. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nah, I'm <laughs> Damn. Shut up, dude. I got some decent crowds. God. No, I I really do hope they come back, but you know, people just aren't taking this shit as seriously as it is and Well that's why I think they're gonna come back. I, I really I really think people are gonna go, you know what? Don't care. And then they're just gonna start doing it. Cause some venue owners are gonna be like, I'm tired of not having money. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much you can blame on like saying that they're not getting any money from the government and stuff, but well, like I know with like the the stimulus packages and shit like that, you know they're doing like one point nine trillion here one trillion a lot of businesses they get a pretty pretty nice amount, so I'm just like wondering like I know you know vinos they're they're they got the food though. yeah, they got food and yep. pub like that's that that was their main niche. That was Seems like those are the ones that are surviving the best, the ones that had the food market. Like the Rev Room, don't aren't don't they sell food too, or is it just mm-hmm. a bar only? Well, they used to, but then they sold the restaurant side. So the restaurant is owned by somebody else now. Okay. And then the Rev Room's just that hall, just that music hall. Yeah. But see, I don't know where the I don't know where the laws fit in because there's a bar in there, and maybe because bars are back to. Uh, they're not back to full capacity, but they're back to full hours. I don't know if they can operate as just a bar or because they are also a venue, they can't operate at all. I don't know, man. I haven't seen anything about it, so I, I really don't know. Yeah, I don't really know how they're how Because, you know, surviving. Sticky's serves food. I've never been at Sticky's. You have I've never been at Sticky's. What? Yeah. 
It ain't bad, dude. I don't even know where that is. I've heard a lot about it. Like, I know a lot of it's people. It's fucking four blocks from Rev Room. Really? Yeah. You know where that little police station is down? If you t- come out of Rev Room and you come out the door and you go left and you just walk down, like, you're the riverfront. Yeah. And you're just yeah, going yeah, yeah. down and there's, like, that little police substation there with, like, that little goofy golf cart. Yeah. It's yeah, right yeah. across the street. There's a place down the street from there, too. It's a really nice ice cream spot. The place inside the place? The one that's like all in, like it's like ten restaurants inside one building. I think so. They sell those crazy popsicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the fruit yeah. in them and shit. Yeah, that shit is good. So good, man. So good. You know what else is good? Yeah. Bud Light Seltzer. <laughs> I'm feeling all right, Tommy. Yeah, I'm feeling good after you know. You feeling hydrated, bud? You popped good? a couple pillies. Oh shit! And got this water. I'm doing pretty good. I got my citric acid. I got my my B12. <laughs> I haven't had sodas in like a fucking month. Oh, yeah. You quit sodas. Congratulations. Yeah. After a week or two, you know, it was pretty, pretty easy from there. There have been a couple close calls because, you know, I'm fat. I like McDonald's. <laughs> so I go to McDonald's and I'm like, shit, they don't have Powerade here. Yeah. Then I found out they had high C or some shit. And I was like, Ooh, I love their high C. I'll take this. Yeah. <laughs> I get the chicken nuggets and the high C almost every time because I'm fucking five. We had a uh, we ordered a twenty piece yesterday and uh, mm. they gave us all spicy nuggets. No, <laughs> yeah, all spicy nuggets and I was like, damn, because like, wait, they got spicy nuggets? Yeah, they got spicy nuggets, bro. Wait, Wendy's, McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. Oh, They're not that shit. bad, but you gotta remember, all thoughts are my own, and I'm fat. Mm. I love food. So. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Clearly, I love food. I'm breaking this chair as we speak. It's never going to sit right again. Mm. What's your YouTube channel? I have no idea. Is it called I Tommy Tommy Guitars? I think it's just Tommy Robinson Music. I Real think. original. Oh, it is. It's so original, bro. <laughs> it's exactly original. It's my name. <laughs> my full name, bro. Let me see. Look it up. Yep. Tommy mm. Robinson Music. There you go. But Everybody go subscribe. Of course, I only have, you know, a couple cringy cover videos, uh, shit quality, but it's fine. I kind of like the idea of making original content, and I've seen a few people try this. But, like, you know, imagine, like, OnlyFans, but for musicians, uh, where, like, they will... I've seen Jordan from ETID, and I saw uh, Cody from Acidies Burn do this years ago. You can buy riffs or songs even i think aaron from unroof yeah. did that for a minute where he would write the drum beat to your song for money i think that's fucking brilliant almost like a uh, fiver that yeah kind of like fiver yeah, but yeah, for yeah. music yeah yeah that's yeah. a better way to put it <laughs> i don't know why i went to only fans because <laughs> boobs i'm what still you... working on fiver too you're on fiver i'm trying for really? some reason, it's not letting me upload any videos, so I don't know. I have, I have a thing on there. But you do have a Fiverr. Yeah. That's cool. Hire me to make some hits for you. At least a riff. A riff. Sometimes, dude, that's all you need. You ever had writer's block, and then you hear something from somebody else, and you're like, that's fucking awesome. Let me go try that. And then you end up coming with your own shit. Dude, what I usually do is, like, if I have no riffs in mind, if I can't think of anything, everything's just starting to sound the same to me, yep. what I'll do is I'll just MIDI out a drum track, and it'll just be a simple, you know, one-two beat, you know, a little hip-hop type beat, whatever, mm-hmm. and then I'll riff to that. It makes it so much easier, so much better. Really? Yeah, it's so easy. I uh, I get real angry, and then I throw my guitar <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that to your Fender, dude. Again? Yeah, don't do oh, that. No. Again, because you have to say again. Because I've done it a bunch. I've learned my lesson as a lad. Oh, right. Yeah, you got some beautiful fucking axes. And also, I copied you and I bought one of the guitars that you own. Appreciate that. Because it's fucking that nice. Where's my money at? <laughs> <laughs> it's at the house under the ground where I buried it. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, what, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I. I don't know. This is going to come out before that video does, but shout out to Alex Hutchinson from AMH. He turned my very fucked up Fender into basically a brand new guitar, and I can't wait to show everybody because it deserves to be seen. It's I can't cr- wait to see it, dude. dude. It is fuck. I'm telling you, I have before and after photos and film, and it is like 
they're not even the same guitar, dude. What kind of locking tuners did you get for it again? They're really fucking expensive, and you know what? I should know this. Are they the Grovers or are they the? Uh, <sighs> not Grover. Uh, maybe maybe Gro- they're they're the ones with like the three. It almost looks like an AT and T emblem. It's like three claw marks on the uh, back, like not claw mark, but like three like marks that are in an like they're like elongated triangles. Fuck. Hold on. I have a Sweetwater app. I bet my purchase history. Where the fuck? You ever have so many apps that you don't use because you're an idiot? Yes. Oh, did I delete it? No. Surely. I did delete it. I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm a big dummy dumb dumb. Hold on. Man, this is not good entertainment. Doop, doop, do. Okay. Clearly, I'm... I don't know. I, I want to say... They're not Grover. I know they're not Grover because Grover stamps their name on them. Yeah. This is an emblem. Fuck. And you got a new bridge and everything on there, right? Dude, everything. Fishman. Oh, yeah, dude, the Fishman Fluence pickups. My God. So I was on, like, a pickup journey. I swear to you, I YouTubed probably every pickup I saw from every guitar player. I was like, what is this? What is that? What does that do? What is this one? Because, you know, there's a lot of, like, clone pickups out there where they'll be like, oh, that's the P90, but it's not from Seymour Duncan. It's, like, this other brand, and it's their version of that. Uh, you know, it's this vintage setup with the ceramic instead of the button. And I'm like, okay, and I got to do all this math and blah, blah, blah. And I come across this video of this old dude, like long red hair. And he's like, these are the Fishman influences, man. Check out all this. <laughs> and he starts playing this rock and roll, which is like, I'm a huge fan of rock and roll. Yeah. Because, you know, my other band that I play guitar in, Lame Johnny, it's very rock and roll inspired. So, like, I try to get those rock and roll tones, but yeah. just a little bit of, little bit more distortion. And he starts playing, and I'm like, that's it? That's the ones? That's the ones I'm going to buy? And I deep dive into them, and it turns out they're fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. And they cost an absolute fortune, and I'm an (laughs) idiot. And I spent all my fucking money that month (laughs) Jesus, on pickups. And, dude, it's everything. The input jack, uh, the three-way switch, everything except the body is brand new. Push and pull. Dude, I'm I'm gonna get to it. Y'all watch the video. It's so I'm starting a profiler series. At least that's what's in my head. Mm-hmm. You know, local businesses, people who do things for people. I want to start like a little small segment for YouTube because I gotta get some YouTube content because this is audio only. Yeah, and I feel like people don't want to see my face, but maybe they want to see some shit to you, put you in have, context. You have a beautiful face. Corey. I have a fat fucking face. You have a beautiful you see this? face. My double chin, I dude, literally, I tried to film myself earlier, and I fucking almost threw the <laughs> camera because the wall. <laughs> you have the face of a fifteen-year-old, but the heart of a forty-year-old. Yeah, you got I have it, the face of a YouTube that's not on YouTube, and he's on the radio. <laughs> like playing guitar, like uh, I was told, okay, it's EMGs or nothing. So right. I was like, okay, that's so. False. I've tried out Seymour Duncan's. Those are pretty nice. Uh, I I was like a religious believer of like EMGs or nothing because that's what I was told. So I was like, what's out there? What else is out there? I've, you know, checked out um, Fishman and I've been, you know, hearing some good shit and then uh, Bare Knuckle. Mm -hmm. So when Blake over at Scabbath Guitars built me that guitar um, with some Bare Knuckles in there, I was like, Holy shit, dude, it's so bright, man. It is the nastiest sounding. You played it for me? Dude. That is the nastiest fucking guitar I've ever heard. It just has such a bright, bright fucking sound. And I was like, I like I told I told him, like, okay, this would be a cool guitar in my head. You know, single pickup. That way, because mm. I'm rarely ever on the, the neck pickup. Have you even pickup. posted that thing to the internet? Um, it not, is the coolest fucking guitar. Not really, not yet. I mean, I've posted a couple of videos of me playing it, but just on like the story, so it's like mm. 24 hours since it's right. out. Um, but, you know, just what the one pickup, set neck, mm. locking tuners. And I told him, I was like, man, the main thing I want is like for it to stay in tune. And so I was, I was kind of wanting like a 24.5 or 25 and a half scale uh, guitar. And uh, he was like, um, Let's try this out. And I'll say, okay, cool. And I think it's like 23 or something like smaller than what I'm used to. a little shorter? Yeah, but it stays in tune like for drop A sharp. And I was like, holy shit, dude. I mean, that makes sense. Less travel would mean less 
you know, problems, right? And I think the set I'm using on that guitar is like 10 through 56. God this, dang. This guitar is like 11 through 64 what or some the fuck? shit. That's bass strings. Yeah, and I was like, wait, what did you do? He's like, I just built it. And I was like, but what did you do, though? <laughs> like, I don't know what you did, but it sounds so fucking sick. Dude, but, it really is fucking gnarly. Are you going to do your first live show back with that one? Yes. Nice. Yes. Yes. Wait, did you do the live stream with that one? I didn't have it yet. Okay. For that, no. Okay. I had. I just had this one. Um, this oh, the Epiphone. One. Yeah. Which the Epiphone is really good, but like. Yo, Epiphone over Gibson. Don't care what anyone says. That's what I'm saying right now. Me personally. <laughs> if you're gonna be so fucking petty to sue like Dean and shit over shit that, come on, you're a fucking multi-billion-dollar company. Come on. Yeah, that's gonna fail. Petty that's failing, dude. They're failing, by the way. They're failing because they're trash. Dude, they were posting guitars on their website as like, look at us. Look at what we can't, that we're broken. Yeah. People were like, this guitar literally has fucking paint missing. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, they made the uh, the RD shape style. True. And that, that's my favorite, favorite it- shape. Uh, like, Dunnable, I know they could oh, probably, probably get sued over it because it's pretty much like yep. the exact same thing. But it's just... To me, it's like the perfect that's offset a, guitars. So that's a great shout out, Tommy. Because if y'all are into guitars, listening right now, stop. Go to Instagram. Go to Dunnable, Dunnable, D U N A B L E. I think guitars. They are the fucking prettiest guitars, dude. That extra notch they put around the top of the bo- like around the edge of the body. You yes. know, like that sunk in part. God Almighty. Or go to Scabbath Guitars on Instagram. Okay. Yes. So good, dude. Dude. I just love I love my guitar. And Your guitar even, is sick as fuck. It looks like a it looks like a it looks like a can of coffee. Like if I'm looking into <laughs> a coffee can that's fuck? full of coffee, that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> he even made this uh flying V and like I told him I was like, dude, I hate flying V's. I've never never been interested in those I'm not, motherfuckers. But he made one, and he let me play his, and I was like, holy shit, like, this feels really good. And he's got it to where, like, the body is kind of, like, coming up on, like, the 20th fret or whatever. And you think that would get in the way, but it really doesn't. I don't know what kind of pickups these are, but these are fucking sick. Let me see. They're, uh, oh, bare knuckle, black hawk. There you yeah. go. Dude, That's bare knuckles are nasty. And the fucking bridge that he put on mine, like, I've never, I've never had a bridge that just felt. It's a hip shot, isn't it? Is it a hip shot bridge? Scaler 3D6 bridge. Oh, whatever. Right. Schaller, I might be saying. Oh, that. Schaller, yeah, yeah, yeah. But could it, be Scholar, I guess. I've never heard it pronounced to be Schaller, honest. I say Schaller. But I'm I like you know the the regular Gibson like the less Paul shape type mm-hmm. bridges. Like those are nice, but like I've always wanted one that was on the body that was just like set right there. That's why I like that's why I like my Telecaster so much. Oh yeah, yours yeah. is a is like yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. down. It's flat. It's just like so comfortable, especially for palm mutant and shit. What I do love Floyd Roses too. If oh, they're too? if they're set, not like floating, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So keeping it in tune. Dalton knows what he's doing, but me, I'm just like I don't know. <laughs> but if if it like that old Charvel I had, yeah, um, before Tommy's jank ass got it, <laughs> I had it, <laughs> I had it, I had it blocked off, and like you know. It felt really Yeah, good. but he uses it though. Yeah. He unblocked it and yeah. makes it like do whale noises now. He put a Shout caller, to low spirits. <laughs> right. He put a caller caller bridge in it. It's mm. pretty much like Floyd Rose, but you don't have to deal with as much bullshit. Dude, Floyd Rose has pissed me off to no end. And Low Spirits is gonna have that live stream. They are live shots. They yes. posted. I cannot wait. The, I'm gonna watch every second of it. Was it like the twentieth of February or some, some, some late shit like February? That. I don't know. Man, we got the fucking internet right here. I bet I can go to Instagram. I can type in fucking low spirits. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention we live in the country, so internet speeds are uh, variable. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that new song though? Yes, the new dude. song's pretty fucking sick. sick. I'm just like, dude, they're they have like no boundaries over there. They just it's just so dark and it's just ideas. That I was like, I didn't, I wouldn't even think that was possible. Like, yeah, it's possible, but it's just like in my head, I'm like, how did they get from here to there? Right. It just doesn't, like they've already changed. Yeah, they're still relatively new, and they've already 
got kind of like they've mapped out this new original path for themselves. It's fucking dope. And they record their own shit too. They do. I know. They get somebody else to mix it, but I'm just like, holy shit, that's and tight. dude, they 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 do their own merch. Yep. Fucking James prints out all their merch. Cody Lee does all their recordings, like, and they're all in that band. Yep. It's smart, man. They're all they're DIY as fuck. They're the most punk rock non punk band we have. <laughs> you see, uh, James is starting to make his own pedals, dude. Looking fucking sick, dude. I want to have him on here so bad just to do pedals. Just, that shit intrigues me so much. Like, I fucking wish I knew how to do that. Same, dude. Fucking same. Dude. I'd be like, yo, man, I got like three hundred pedals. They'd be like, what does any of this shit do? Be like, I forget. I'd be like, I'm making 300 HM2 clones. Yeah. And 45 fucking this one's, delay effect. This one's a tube screamer, <laughs> but it's not because I made it. <laughs> I will say, custom, like the bo- the boutique, boutique, the boutique, custom pedals, whatever. Boutique. They're pretty cool, but at least label your fucking knobs. Tell me what this does. Tell me what that You know does. what I, my biggest complaint about the boutique? I have a couple. Mm-hmm. Clear coat, man. Fucking please put some clear coat on there because the <laughs> shit rubs off. Like on my, uh, there's one of them that I have that I literally don't know what that knob does anymore. So I just like, it's set. I put a Sharpie at the line and that's just where I go back to every fucking time. I'm like, I can't remember if this is rate or depth or what the fuck this was labeled as. Like, damn it. Yeah. But I'm a big dumb dumb too. I'm not a good pedal guy. I, oh God, yeah, I'm the worst. I think for me, it's to the point to where I just need a tuner, some sort of distortion, mm-hmm. and a noise gate, and I'll, I'll be good. I don't really fuck with any of that other shit anymore, like the the delays, the the whammy. I have them, the reverb. I have them, but I've got a whole stack of them over here. But you know, I just don't need it. Especially it to me. I'm like, is this really making a difference in a live setting? It right. might make some difference, but it's not coming out as I want it. And I might just not be doing it right. So save the headache and save the pedal board space and just give me the three pedals and I'll be out of here. You know? I'm there, but I do have to have a delay. Oh, and I do. Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm one of these. Uh, I'm one of these clowns that is definitely on the uh, where it splits the signal and you and you get. Oh, shit. Sorry. And you, I'm not used to talking to a microphone. You get the one. That's like a split, so you send one to a bass rig. Oh, yeah. It's an octave pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on that boat. I fucking love that so much because in my head, I write a lot of Southern style mm-hmm. riffs. And just, man, when you click that thing on, it just comes out of me. I mean, shit, back when Harvester was a thing, that's what they did. Oh, when yeah, they dropped down to three pieces, we, uh, Shelby and I sick. saw them like the last show at Venus that they had. And I was like, I was well, there. Oh, yeah, you were. I was there. Yeah. I was with us. Really? Was it our 10-year anniversary show? I have no idea. I think it was. But I just remember, uh, I was like, well, where's their bass player? And then I was like, oh, I see what he's doing. Yeah, oh, shit. And it sounded, it dude, sounded fucking so huge, sick. dude. You run the two cabs, yep. and if you can afford it, you run a bass cab, too, and you just fucking annihilate your senses. AB switch that motherfucker. Yee! <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get more into YouTube too, man. My shit's all fucked up though. I I uh, I talked to some friends yesterday. I was like, "Can y'all teach me how to do this, please?" <laughs> I can't figure it out because I want to do like I want to do like uh like that profiler series like I was talking about. But yep. like I'm starting to edit the first one, and I'm kind of lost already. I'm just like I got three frames, like three sets of footages in there, and I'm like. Wait, I, I'm missing words. Like, I don't have words. <laughs> Fuck, I have to go back and re-record something. And it's just, I don't know, man. There is, I, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of respect for those uh, YouTube dudes who do everything alone. That is it's, crazy. Especially those who do, like, put out, like, three or five videos a week. That, I don't know how the fuck dude. they do it, dude. And they do it by their self. It's like, do you sleep? You know what's really frustrating, though? Is when you have a lot of aspiration to do it. You have right. all your tools, but you have no ideas. You're just like, I have yeah. everything at hand, but what do I do with this? The learning curve is a real bitch. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm at because I like, I got that nice camera. I have my computer, mm-hmm. so I've got the stuff. I don't need much else. I've got microphones and shit. I've got the recording software, sorta. I have like Logic on this, but then I have like DaVinci, which is free. But like I said, if you don't pay for it, it's kind of locked down. Yeah. So you can basically make like simple videos, but man, 
that shit, that shit has been a nightmare. It really has. I worked on one, I'm up to a minute and I worked on that for like three hours. I have a minute <laughs> and I had two minutes and I deleted a whole minute of, <laughs> Well, it's like it's like this looks like shit. It's like you know, like you you've recorded music before too, and it's like you you put so much time into this, and it's just like three hours gone by, and you're just like, oh shit, I just have this much done, yeah, and you just don't realize it. Dude. It's like if if you're in a band, you know, mm-hmm. you go to the studio, and you think you only need one day to record a song or two. No, you're insane. You'll probably need more cuz you you don't understand how how fast time goes by in a studio just setting Unless up. Unless you're and- just chill with it. Unless you're like, "Oh, sounds good to me." You know, like some bands which I get, you know, some bands don't give a fuck. They're just like, "Whatever. Sounds like it sounds." I think we did our uh we recorded 14 songs for the Waste EP. Mm-hmm. Um we did that in two days. We did like all the guitars, drums, shit like that, and then we did the vocals the next day. But like I said, that wasn't to a click. That wasn't to the grid. That wasn't anything. That was just all natural. All you had to do was you know set everything up, and then go through the songs, and then add the other guitar, and then vocals. And I don't know how we did it back then, because now it's just like uh, we did a new version of Cop Job, and that took like a whole day because you know we have our tone. We want to make sure everything right. sounds more gelled together and in time. It took longer because you cared. Yeah, 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 we care more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. This isn't punk rock at all. <laughs> That's a, uh, I kind of, you know what though? I think there's something to be said for both of those things. Like there's something to be said for a band who cares enough to make it like fucking the perfect version of, of what you're trying to hear. But there's also something to be said for just go in, mic the room, fucking just do it and be and just be happy with it like just be good like just play better and you know a lot of like especially in my early days dude i would be like oh one take yeah no it sounds great and then you're like now it's like calm down yeah that's like at least keep going we're gonna just loop this shit you just keep playing it over and over till you don't suck (laughs) yeah that's that's where you have to practice man because like you can practice all day (laughs) But if you're the only one practicing and you go to the studio and nobody else has practiced, then you're going to spend all day, all day trying to get it to sound right. I mean, for this, uh, for the release we had last year, or was it last year or year before last? Fuck, I don't know anymore. I think it was it's 2020. When... Yeah, it was last year. Okay. Yeah, that, that fucked up a lot of plans. But Oh, dude, you're um, telling me. <laughs> But we we actually sat down and practiced, and it took a while for us to record just those what ten ten eleven songs. I don't know how many, but it be- shows. We we fucking practiced, and like um, we did it live. Mm-hmm. So it's like Chase and I, like he was playing drums, I was playing guitar, and then uh like we would have Dalton and Stan in the in the studio with uh, uh with Wolfman, and um, they'd be like, okay, y'all sped up right here. And, Y'all need to do this. And so we would have to redo it because we want to make sure it doesn't like, if it's a fast part, you don't want to go overly fast. Or if right. it's a two step, you don't want it to sound like it's starting to speed up. You just right, want to make right. sure it's like consistent. Yeah, consistent. Yeah. Timing's a real motherfucker. Very. You want to know how bad you suck? Play within ears and play to a click track. <laughs> you'll learn real quick. <laughs> If you've never done it, you'll be like, oh shit, I'm the worst. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how, like, dr- like, I don't know how drummers can fucking play to click like especially I can't. like I don't know how the fuck they do it, dude. It blows my fucking mind. It really is the most impressive thing. Like you can say like, okay, this song's two hundred BPM. Okay, every snare is gonna be on the one or two or four, whatever you wanna right. do. But it's just like having the music and the click and trying to keep up. You gotta practice, man. Dude, you I've seen a practice. lot of uh, I've seen a lot of studios are starting to do. They'll make the whole record and then do the drums. Yeah, that way it's just like oh, it's just way easier this way. Yeah, cuts down on like oh, you you fucking sped up, you rushed it, but it's like you're not rushing it if you're playing to it already in your head the whole song. It's to me, I I I I, uh, I entertain that idea a lot more because it's like oh, then it's just like we're just playing together, mm-hmm. but. You know, especially if there's like a guitar player in front of me, yeah. just pan him on me. He doesn't even have to be plugged in. Just as long as I can see it, yeah, <laughs> I can go with it better, much better than hearing it. Because that fucking beak, book, 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 beak, book makes me insane. I think we did that for the original versions of a uh, cop drop and 
not cop drop. It was uh, Ice Watch. Yeah, we did that with Ice Watch and a couple of other songs that we never released. Um, but I I like perfection, but at the same time, I like the human element of it. Like I love, especially like you know, playing to a grid. That's nice. At least you know you get the right idea right. like with the the shit that we've been writing i've been re-recording it to the grid making sure you know okay this is what it's going to sound like ideally um but it's just not really like there's no really human element in there like nobody's perfect you're not going right. to hit the kick as hard and right and on time yeah. but no that's that editing shit <sighs> god editing fuck editing so much i've tried that I've tried that before on like actual tracks and I was like, nope, I'm yeah, good. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Dude, I tried and tried that first EP we put out. I did that whole thing from my fucking kitchen <laughs> <laughs> and like, it sounds like I did the whole thing from my kitchen too. Like it's <laughs> we had, uh, <laughs> later on, we paid Nathan a whole lot of money to fucking fix it and he did a great job and that's, I don't know if it's out there or not. Cause like with a, uh, especially with drums, like, or I can really relate more to guitar. Right. Like if you're picking and let's say you're just doing like a like a two set part or something and your your right hand is a little bit slower than the metronome or anything else, you literally have to especially if you're doing like D I or whatever, you can see where the, the note hits and you have to edit that and move that and it's just such like if you want perfection Dude. and do all that you know, you <laughs> it's a lot of time. You have to learn so much shit. And I'm just like, that's why I'm like, no, I'm good. Yep. I'll just do my demos and I'll keep going. <laughs> I can't do it. I literally can't do it. You I, did it, I've though. Tried. I've tried. You did it. You I technically did something. it. You technically I did, did it. a version of it. You did, you did really good, though. <sighs> it's so fucking, that shit, man, oh my God. That shit will make me crazy just thinking about it. So what you showed me with the, uh, the, the some of the stuff that you showed me, I don't know if, People already know about that, but I was just like, these sound way better. It sounds like it's a lot more in your face up oh, front, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Wait, the new stuff or the old, the pre the stuff we had Nathan redo the stuff you had Nathan redo. Oh yeah, oh yeah. dude, yeah. It sounds so much more like live in your face, yes. and it's just I actually kind of like that. It's like maybe maybe that's what we should do. Maybe just make it more like fucking visceral. It's got a real nasty vibe yeah. to it. It's the crate. There's one song. It's not even like that heavy of a song, but then when he get, when he got his hands on it, it was mm. like this might be the heaviest shit we ever wrote. <laughs> that dude is so good, man. He is on top of the world, dude. For me, uh, I can't think of anybody else I want mastering my shit. He's so good. Shout out to Nathan. God, up in Ozark, Arkansas. Ozarks, man. You want to go out? In the, you want to go in the fucking mountains and make music, huh? What with like banjos and shit? <laughs> now, nah, man, I love heavy stuff. <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me you don't like Nickelback? When I was ten, maybe. <laughs> uh, never, because when you were ten, I was a hundred. I never liked Nickelback. Well, you know, I say that, but I've always said if there's any band I could ever play a show with, it would be Nickelback. They have the most loyal fan base of all fucking time. You got to remember, though, too. You grew up in Little Rock, right? Uh, Sort of. Little sorta. Rock, Bryant. Bryant. You know. I come from a small town. True. Where <laughs> it was like 99.9 .9 or whatever. Radio station was always on the bus and fucking kids would be singing all this shit. And I'd just be like in the back, headphones in, listening to Slipknot and some shit. Right. I'd be like. And then I had a girl turn around and be like. You know I can hear that shit, right? And I was like, "Good." Good. She turned back around. <laughs> Fuck out of my face! Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> Fuck out of my face! You want me to turn it up so you can hear it some more? <laughs> Y'all had radio on the bus? Yeah, man. What the yeah. fuck? We had radio on the bus, and then like even like the church bus, they would play the same exact thing. I used to go to church a lot as a kid. That's probably K Love. Yeah, K Love. And um, holy, holy! I think what station is the Edge on? Uh, is it hundred point three? Yeah, I yeah, one hundred point three. The Edge. My brother showed me some of that stuff, and I was like, "Whoa, what kind of music is this?" Disturbed, and, yeah, and Seether. So I've worked with so many of those bands. 
<laughs> bro, I'm telling you, like, people people might hate on Disturb a lot, but shit, that's one of the bands that got me. Is it really? Kinda, yeah. Wow. My mom wow. was really was really into that band. My brother was really into like Kill Switch Engage and Slipknot like. and uh, that I like. What else? Like Mushroom Head, I think. They're not bad. Shit I've like seen that. them before. It was kind of cool. And Corn, you know, oh, he yeah. was really into that. And, um, yeah. We we used to share share a room and had like bunk beds, mm. and he had his computer in the corner, and he would just, just play shit on play it all the time, Lincoln mm. Park and shit like that. And um, then I met like Jeremy and Lucas and them, and they showed me like you know the locals, right. and then their side of shit and i was like whoa dude i hated store uh i hated uh lincoln park so much and then i saw them live and that's what changed my mind i was like oh they're actually badass because when you saw them live they didn't do shit like they were one of those rare bands that like uh you weren't going to just watch them play the album note for note they would change it up a bit yeah and they would do cooler shit and i was like damn and chester was a fucking beast well, I only I only know them by one album. The For me, Mura I was like, or whatever. Yeah, if 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 I if I had to listen to anything else, I probably would have been disappointed. So right. I was like, okay, I'm gonna stick to this album. I might have heard other shit, but I really don't remember because. Did you ever watch some Transformer movies? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I tried, and I was like, that's you know my what? guilty pleasure, uh, man. I was, I'll, I'll I'll literally I can sit there and watch it over <laughs> and over again. I don't care. I think I might have watched the first one, and then yeah. I was like, oh. Uh, You're like, oh, look, oh, look, explosions. Oh, wait, more explosions. Shia LaBeouf's in this. That's that's cool. Megan Fox. Uh, yeah. Uh, Turn it off. Uh, Next. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for it me, it stinks. Like, you know they were. You know they were good when they were doing songs with fucking Jay Z, though. Yeah, that's pretty fucking sick. You know what? I, I have mad respect for them. They really were. Their fucking live show was amazing. I went there to see Story of the Year. It was like when they played at the arena together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I came in. They were already playing Linkin Park. I missed Story of the Year completely. Hilarious. That's what I'm good at. You know what was really scary, though? You have some of those bands that are like, okay, they, they're very techy, but in person, they're going to sound like shit. Yes. I've been to shows where, like, that was the case. And then there was one show where I was like, okay, I wonder how they're going to sound because I've never seen them live. Mm. Local heroes. Paul Bearer. Oh. I saw them for the first time a uh, couple – was it last year? No, it was the year before last. When you well, played with them? Yeah, when we did that, those couple dates with them. And, uh, Wasn't that the beer release? Didn't they have a yeah, beer that came yeah. with that? That shit was so good, dude. <laughs> when they did their sound check, it sounded just like the fucking CD. Like Shelby and I looked at each other. We were like, holy shit. Like – the dude got some fucking vocals, dude. It's so good. But then, you know, you have like in the other world you have rappers that, you know, can keep their shit together. Then you have rappers like Bone Thugs and Harmony that just aren't really good because half of the members are gone. Right. I'm very, very pissed That's off sad. about that still. They're coming back, I think. We went Yeah to, to see them uh and DMX was supposed to be there, but he canceled. But Yin Yang Twins played. That was my first time seeing them. And I was like, okay, that's tight. And then uh, we were there for 3 6 Mafia. And dude, 3 6 Mafia fucking killed it. it Did was they? My first time ever seeing <sighs> them. And I was like, holy shit, dude. And they had Lil White there, too. And I was like, oh my. Fu-. Like, my head was <laughs> fucking blown away. Hell I was yeah. Like, oh, shit. I've never been. I can't. I can't say that I've ever been to like the greatest rap show. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it's like they'll play like a quarter of a song. You're like, what the fuck? We didn't even get to the hook yet. <laughs> They're just like play the next one. They like they get bored. Like they'll they'll play it and then they'll get the uh, the big air horn or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you're just like fucking a man. Yeah, like what the fuck are you doing? Wait, what? I was waiting for the chorus, but you know, <sighs> you got to keep the show going and keep that keep that energy up, man. That's uh yeah. Well, I think that's true with any music, country, rap, any of it, metal, fucking pop punk, you name it. I don't think I've ever been to a country show. No, I did. Oh, I um, have. I don't know if it's technically a show, but uh we went to to a bar, Shelby and I, and there was some some hick playing 
and uh, some hick. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm gonna call him some fucking hick playing. And he was good. Of course, he was playing like John Mayer or some shit. And we were just drinking. And I was like twenty dollars for a martini. Damn. Fuck. <laughs> Yes. Where the fuck did y'all go? It was uh, fuck that place. Twenty dollar drinks. Oh my god, that's me drinking in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> See, fucking, I, I, you know, I saw Garth Brooks. That was fucking insane. Yeah, I hear he's pretty good. I Dude, it was like electrifying. That dude's a rock star for sure. I get it. I get. I get why everyone goes and sell, and he sells out shows like every night. I'm yeah. just like, holy fuck, dude. I mean, that motherfucker was like 50-something, 60, like climbing on drum risers and <laughs> shit, doing fucking flips. He has treadmills built into the stage. Jesus Christ. And he would literally shoot <laughs> across the stage so he didn't have to run. It would treadmill him across the stage fast as shit, and then he would be on the other side playing. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> it was either Instinct or Backstreet Boys that, that had some of those on stage before. Like, I would watch those MTV videos of, like, live performances and shit. I'm still like, shit, I'd still see them live. I don't give a fuck. I think I'd see NSYNC. I don't think I'd give a fuck about the Backstreet Boys. I don't think so. I don't know, though. I'm I'm pro back, Backstreet Boys. But I feel like they've had a couple more hits. But as far as, like, su- right. successful members, I kind of think NSYNC's got that one in the back. Oh, well, just because of JT, though. And JC. You think? I think. Didn't he do like uh, America's Best Dance Crew? JC. Uh, I think that, he did. I think he was. <laughs> is that when really that an was popular? <laughs> when it was popular. When it was popular. Yeah. Damn okay, it. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. J- I mean, JT, I think takes the cake out of all of them because nobody had a career like that guy. Nope. Solo career afterwards, then parlayed into acting and fucking slayed that shit, and was like, hmm, what else? Right. I'm just waiting for his stand-up special to come on Netflix. He's so fucking good, dude. I bet he'd be good at it, too. All th- thoughts are my own. <laughs> I have to reiterate that. Crash guys, I'm responsible for thoughts. Tommy or Corey. <laughs> yeah, my company's... My company. This ain't no company. Oh, it's a company. You sold shirts. You sold, what'd you have? Oh, shit, I did sell some shirts. Does, didn't y'all have koozies? I have, still have some. You still have some koozies. Hit me up, y'all. Koozies, five bucks. Shirts, I think they're ten bucks. <laughs> A whole ass t-shirt for $10? Can't get that shit nowhere else. It's nice. It's gray. It's real bland. Yeah, I have to sell me one of those. <laughs> yeah, Tommy, what the fuck, dude? If you have any XLs left. I think I do. I think I have every size except... No, I have one small. I have a small. So if you're like a petite petite person or a child, <laughs> maybe if you're the size of a child, I got you. <laughs> Oh my god. What else, dude? What are we at? 52 minutes. What? It felt like 10 minutes. We blazed through 52 minutes already? I knew this wasn't going to be hard. The Super Bowl's today. Oh, guess who gives a fuck? I do. Oh, really? I do. You're okay. kidding. I'm, I'm just saying if Tom Brady can do it, I'm a Mahomes person. I'm always there for the Chiefs. But if Brady can pull this off, I'll be like, okay... Whatever he's almost like this is not the news I expected. <laughs> Today is a weird fucking day. <laughs> it, it really is, man. I'm I'm not really into into football because like all of my childhood heroes like retired right, or right. were you a Dallas Cowboy like the Aikman era? No, I was Deion Sanders that kind of shit. I was a Dallas Cowboys fan back when Emmitt Smith. There you go. I don't know if that's the same generation. That's pretty much the same. But from there, I went to, like, you know, the Ocho Cinco when he was with the Bengals. But I was more so into the Steelers because they had Jerome Bettis. And that was, like, my favorite halfback of all time. But then, you know, I was a big fan of Michael Vick and then found out Michael Vick likes to (laughs) fucking beat dogs and shit. Well, did he beat him or did he just make Dog fights. It was dog fighting, right? Yeah, okay. So fucking So he probably did beat him. If you hurt animals, you're a bitch. Yeah, I agree. (coughs) Fuck that dude. But other than that, like, uh, I don't really know that many, like. Did he come back? Yeah, he did come back. He came back to the Eagles and their coach got a lot of shit. For that, for letting him back on the team, yeah. But um, I think that was at the end of McNabb. Was he a Buccaneer? I don't know. I can't remember what team he played. He originally played for the Falcons. I don't know much about sports, man. So I'm kind of just, I'm I'm spitballing here. But um, I do know that the Super Bowl has started, though. I thought it was at five thirty. 
Oh, yeah. It's five twenty. And the weekend's supposed to be playing. That's half right. Time. I know that because my wife has reminded me of <laughs> times that we're watching the halftime show, so we actually can't go too much longer. Oh no, no, but it's fine. It's fine. But. It's my first episode since fucking July, dude. Bro, you've drank every single one of those fucking seltzers. Did I? Yes. This one's still halfway oh, full. Well, I'm not even down all the way on this bottle, but... And I don't even have to pee. You know what that means? I'm a fat piece of shit. No, it means that your liver is trying to survive right now. <laughs> <laughs> fucking help. <laughs> Fuck. It's too many alcohols. <laughs> I actually feel pretty good. Not like drunk, but you know, kind of like... I could go to take a nap. So just to make everyone aware, he lives about a mile or two away, so I will be driving him home. <laughs> yeah, fuck all that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I actually feel really good. It makes the pain in my back go away, which, if y'all don't know, I've worked construction since I was 14 years old, and I'm 37, so... Damn. Yeah. Doesn't that suck? <sighs> Getting old is a bitch. Honestly, anything's better than the fucking retail industry. I've I've worked in there for five years. I'll never go back. Customers are not always right. Fuck well, that no, shit. No, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm on the fucking side that they're almost never right. They're just entitled pieces of shit. Myself included. Uh, I My favorite job I ever had, though, was working at Pizza Hut. Really? But I, but I wasn't uh, like a customer. Per- I was in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Dude, this is my favorite shit ever. It's my retirement plan is to work at a pizzeria of some sort. That'd be pretty sick. Like, you know, just like, oh, yeah, I get like, you know, 200 bucks a week or something. Just 200 bucks a week, man. Hey, dude. Um, I think my favorite job was uh, I worked at Coca-Cola for no shit. a couple months. Yeah. Um, and I was like one of those like pallet builders, kind of like, like uh-huh. if a store has an order, you put – whatever drinks on the pallet and then you shrink wrap it up and put it on the truck. Did y'all have one of those sick ass shrink wrap machines? Yes. Those are so cool. And so like, fucking cool. I would have stayed there, but the main problems were the hours were shit. Yeah. And, uh, did you work that fucking middle shift? Yes. Dude. So I did it part time cause they wanted me to be there from like five to 3 AM. I was like, yeah. no, I got work at seven cause I was doing like <laughs> two jobs. Cause I was like, you know, why the fuck not? So, um, and then on the weekends, I would work from like 9 a.m. to 6 or something. But I did I did like a full shift there. But that shit was fun. Had it not been for the shitty hours and you have to meet like a quota. Oh, like, a quota? Yeah, you for have building to, pallets? Yeah, so like they have like the main main amount of items that they want out. So let's say it's like 23,000 items. Fuck. They want their crew, their daytime crew to meet. To work like 75% and then the nighttime to work like the rest. That way they can clean up the area and repeat. So you would usually have to do like one to 2,000 pieces or whatever just for your stuff. And then you could go home. What the fuck? And you have to print off paper. So after you're done with the pallet, you put the paper in. And you print off another one. You could have like 100 on a sheet or you could have like 20. But it was, like the people, they were really nice. But it it was just like I was like I was I'm good. I worked like a couple months and then after the Thanksgiving weekend I was like, Yeah, I'm not coming Holy back, fuck, y'all. Fuck, dude. I'm yeah. good. Imagine Super Bowl. Yeah, I know. Imagine imagine fuck Bud that. dude, these motherfuckers, Bud Light imagine the Bud Light trucks like the week before the Super Bowl. What was cool too though was uh like since it's Coke, they had like these like drink machines. Um, you could either get those for free or they had like the actual machines pay like a quarter and get a whole bottle. What? And they also had a refrigerator in the warehouse filled with like monsters and waters and whatever you want. You could just take. It oh was so God. sick. So I'm going to get a job at the Coke <laughs> factory like tonight. <laughs> I mean, I think it started like 14 or 15. and Back then. Yeah, and I was just I was just working I think twenty hours a week if that. And I was I was making almost as much as I was full time, a full forty hours. And Damn. I was like, yeah. But they ain't giving you no benefits though. No, they gave me benefits. Really? If I On a chose to, shift? if I chose to, but I was like, no, give me my money. I want right. to go home. I got you. So, um, yeah, they gave you like a allowance for like boots because you have to wear like steel toe boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. stepped on a nail, and I was like, oh. Well, these actually, you know, that's cool. Oh, they work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I don't have tetanus. (laughs) But, like, they gave you an allowance, but the store that they sent you to is, like, 
okay, the cheapest one we have is like 150 and they only give you like a $50 allowance. And so they just take it out of your paycheck. And I was like, okay, I'm not going out. And like last check, they took out like 50 or 100. And I was like, whatever. I mean, nice pair of boots. That's the only job I've ever quit. Really? Yeah, it's the only job I've ever quit. It seems like it was a pretty decent job, though. It was a really good job. It really was. But I was Fuck. like, I'm not going to fucking work. Like I'd explode my heart, though, if they had free monsters. Like, <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> like, yeah, he died on the first day from what? Like, his heart literally shot out of his ass. <laughs> No, it, was, it, it it got rough sometimes. These fucking like they had like no filters over there, and like I would watch so many fights over there too. And there was this like right before we were gonna go to break, this asshole decides to take a huge pallet of like those like six pack of cokes mm-hmm. and tip the motherfucker <gasps> over. No. So everybody had to like try to stack them back up or throw them away. He did it on like, purpose? No, but it was like, it It was avoidable. Like, Got you. come on, bro. You've been here for like, what, a century now? Come right. on. Maybe it was on purpose. Shit. Maybe he's a bitch ass. He's a bitch ass. We all know about those bitch asses. <laughs> One hour. One hour. We Are did we it. done? If you want to be, dude. We got the Super Bowl to watch. I'm happy to be back. I am too, man. I'm now your co-host. Hell yeah. Thank you for having me on here. Sick. Now I gotta get a four channel interface now. And get the fuck out of my house. Holy fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. Um, I'm not, oh, say, so I'll say the people. It's not gonna be every week right now, but it is gonna be probably every other week at least. Gonna try to at least get to that point. And then as soon as fucking COVID is over, dude, I swear to God, I'm doing three episodes a week. I'm doing episodes. Catch me at Vino's. Catch me at Rev Room. Sticky Fingers. I'm never. I told my wife the other day. I was like, uh, "I'm sorry, babe, but when this shit ends, I'm not coming <laughs> home. I'm not doing it." I look forward to listen to more of your episodes, man. Because there's there's like a lot of people I think you should you should interview. And we've talked about it before. Mm-hmm. And, and some of the people I've I've told you, hey, you should probably do this. And I look back at your old episodes. I was like, oh wait, you already did. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. my bad. Well. <laughs> I, I definitely I have a bunch of new faces in mind, which is cool. It's kind of neat that even though last year was basically a write-off for the entire music industry, yeah, it's like there's still a lot of, at least around here, there's a lot of new shit that's cropped up, and I'm pretty excited to get into that, especially there's a few new bands that have been started, and it's like mm-hmm. you decided to start a whole band in the middle of a fucking pandemic. That's a unique thought process. Because mine was kind of the opposite. <laughs> I was like, well, it's all fucked. Everything's stupid. There are bands out there, though. They're making this shit work. Work. Oh, getting a phone call? Yeah, Shelby's grandpa. Oh, no. It's probably about her car. It's fine, though. I hope it's good, man. Yeah. God, terrible. Fuck that new Big Red. Yo, fuck oh, Bryant Brake and Tire Automotive. They blew up my motherfucking <laughs> engine. Fuck trees for falling on my fucking house. I used to love trees, dude. That was my favorite plant. Fuck y'all, you <laughs> big ass bitches. Break my fucking roof in half. Uh, what else? Uh, fuck it, suicide. I hate that shit. That just happened again. Uh, fuck stoves that are older than twenty. They catch on fire and try to burn your house down. What else happened to me? Oh, fuck rats for chewing on my plumbing. That was January, y'all. That was my January. <laughs> Fuck that dude that wanted to bitch about that that brick wall thing that you were telling me about. Oh, was like, dude. Oh, little... I lost those two builders. Yeah, one of them had turned into a criminal, dude. Did I tell you about that shit? No. I turned this fucking builder in for stealing to the fucking clients. Like, I didn't know. Something told me he was stealing, and I mentioned it to them. I was like, hey. I, like, I went and saw them in person afterwards. I was like, hey, just so y'all know, I think this guy is stealing from you. Turns out not only was he stealing from them, but it was, like, way more than I thought it's a whole thing now. You know, snitches get stitches, right? I don't care. Dude, <laughs> dude he was stealing thousands that is of square crazy, feet man. of hardwood from these people. And that's a lot of goddamn money. You ever priced hardwood? I know you have. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, that dude. When you're a homeowner, you're like, Oh fuck. That's like, dude, that's like, Oh my God. I can't even think about the amount of money he took them for. Dude. I would be so fucking pissed. Just like, when we bought, well, ours is laminate. That's not, that's not. Yeah, the, but still. That shit was still. a fortune, though. And then 
I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like, oh, wait, we got to put this shit in. Hey, Corey, um, <laughs> yeah. could you come over, please? Yeah. <laughs> and then y'all are too nice to me. I hate it. I right, still got one room we still got to get done. Is it this one? No, it's the, the one oh, over the bedroom. There. Oh, yeah, the other bedroom. I'm going to keep the carpet in here, man, honestly, because it's like... Keeps the sound down. This is literally the only room that I haven't had any animals come in and just completely fuck it up. Uh-huh. So, pro tip. Do not buy a house with carpet. Buy a house with hardwood floors. Solid surfaces all day. Or uh, bedrooms uh, only. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And keep the door shut. Keep the door shut, yes. Because animals piss and chew carpet. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> they really do. Just seeing seeing the look like on our faces when we were doing uh, the master bedroom. Uh-huh. Fuck. I was like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> and then, like, the living room wasn't bad, but it was just like, oh, my. I didn't even realize all that was going on. So we had that entertainment center blocking that corner off. So. Right. But, hey, it, it's definitely worth it. It makes your house smell so much better. Oh, dude. Just a word for the wise. Don't get any animals. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Yeah, I mean, get an animal, but maybe like housebroke animals. Housebroke animal, yes. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, this has been a fucking blast. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you, Corey. Thanks for being my first guy back, man. Uh, thanks for being my friend, You're even though welcome. January sucked for me. Uh, y'all, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. I'll see y'all around the bend. Stay tuned to our YouTube. Lots of YouTube shit coming. I fucking promise i'm working on it right now currently tommy anything you want to plug um just uh honestly if uh if you're in a small town and you want to bitch about the music scene um that's your own fault not anybody else's all right everybody thank you for listening